Today I'm going to talk about the issue of loss and damage. Uh, first with a little background, then what's happening here in COP24, and then what's going to happen after COP24. So the background is that loss and damage has been something that we, the vulnerable countries, have uh, demanded be included in the negotiations. And after many, many years of demanding it unsuccessfully, uh, we were successful five years ago in COP19, actually here in Poland, in Warsaw, in persuading all the countries to include it as a new Warsaw International Mechanism, or WIM, on loss and damage. And over the last five years, we've had an executive committee set up that has had a work program on different aspects of loss and damage, including slow onset, like sea level rise, rapid onset, like floods and typhoons, um, looking at insurance and other innovative finance mechanisms, um, looking at non-economic losses and damages. And so a variety of aspects of the issue have been addressed and looked at. Uh, one of the big ones is displacement uh, of people, uh, forced displacement because of climate change. And that uh, report, that loss and damage Warsaw International Mechanism report is now being prepared and is discussed here. But it isn't a decision uh, point in COP24. The decision point is next year in COP25, where the report will be reviewed and the next five years of the Warsaw International Mechanism mandate will be given or possibly even stopped. Uh, we hope it won't be stopped, we hope it will continue, uh, but that will be a discussion for next year. But the preparations for that discussion are taking place here now uh, informally. The second uh, major breakthrough happened at COP21 in 2015 during the Paris Agreement where we fought for and finally succeeded in getting a special article on loss and damage, Article 8 of the Paris Agreement, that specifically says we need to address loss and damage and also highlighted the need to focus on the enhanced displacement of people that we are seeing all over the world with more and more uh, environmental refugees who are actually becoming climate change refugees uh, as we speak right now and will be much bigger numbers in the future. And people realize this and, and accept that we have to address this. So one of the things that has come out of that process is a task force on migration, on climate change related migration, which has just reported and we had a side event discussion on it, very informative, very good discussion. And again, that will be something we will be looking at uh, here in COP24. So finally, what we are hoping for in COP24, and when I say we, I'm talking about the vulnerable countries who are pushing for this, against the developed countries and even some large developing countries, uh, is that loss and damage gets recognized in the rule book for the Paris Agreement. It's the main agenda for COP24 is agreeing the rule book. And what that means is for every item we agreed in Paris, we now have to agree on measuring it, reporting on it, and verifying it. That's called the rule book for mitigation, for adaptation, for loss and damage, for finance, for transparency, for global stock like every aspect of the Paris Agreement, we have an MRV, or measuring, reporting, verification, to be agreed here in Paris. That then becomes the rule book. What we are asking for is that on every one of these other tracks, not just the loss and damage track, we'd like loss and damage to be recognized because it's already happening. So when we talk about money, it's not just mitigation and adaptation, but also loss and damage. When we talk about mitigation, uh, it's also including what we're doing on loss and damage. When we talk about adaptation, it's also loss and damage. So we are trying to embed loss and damage into all the different uh, tracks of the negotiations here in Paris. Uh, we're off to a good start. We've, we've agreed four of the most vulnerable country groups have come together on this uh, at our uh, urging. The least developed country group, which is leading this, the small island states that negotiates as the Alliance of Small Island States, AOSIS, the Africa group of negotiators, AGN, and ILAC, which is the Latin American group. So these four groups of vulnerable countries are finding common positions, arguing together, trying to persuade the other large developing countries like China and India and the developed countries. So we're halfway through the process here in COP24. We'll see what happens next week.